Hey everyone, welcome to the first devlog of a new game I started to develop pretty much exactly one week ago. So I started on Sunday where I had a whole afternoon all to myself. And I had been playing with the thought of getting into game development for months, if not years. I started watching a series by Dave Frampton who developed Sapiens, which is now finally on Steam in early access. And the way he approached game development always fascinated and inspired me. So I started watching him a few years ago and ever since then I started to think about doing it myself. I have to say though, I am not by any means a software developer or a programmer or a computer scientist. I am actually a biologist who deals with microscopes and I've gotten a bit into Python coding a couple of years ago and using it more and more regularly over the last year. And I thought now's the time to start developing a bit of my own game or at least play around with what I can do. I had a look at Unity, one of the most popular game development tools out there, I believe. And after playing around the tutorial a bit, I lost motivation again. So instead, for the first little project I set for myself, I thought let's stick with something I'm comfortable with, which is Python. And there's a very nice package called Pygame, which takes care of most of the backend stuff so we could get straight into it. And actually the way I started out is I went straight to ChatGPT and asked it, hey, what's up? Could you write me a player controller using Pygame? And this is how my script started. Before we get into the current development, I actually saved a lot of intermediate files from the very, very beginning of development. And I thought it might be a good learning experience to go through them step by step and see what I learned at what point and how my idea of the game itself developed. All right, here you can see the actual script that ChatGPT spit out, which is just a very simple player controller. We have a window size defined here. We start our Pygame display. We define our player, a player speed, and then we look for the inputs in the game loop and move the player accordingly. And if we run this, we get something very simple, like just a red circle that moves very briskly around the window. So the first thing I did is that the player can no longer leave the window anymore and I just clip the player coordinates to zero and the window width and height. Pretty much the same, but now we're getting stuck. At this point I got sick of looking at the circle already, so I have a simple polygon shape here and I also read in the mouse coordinates on the window and from that calculated the angle of the player to the mouse and that should always orient the player towards the mouse. Until now we just had a very lonely player so I added a loop that generates very similarly to the player an enemy list with their own coordinates, their own speeds and their own orientation and then in the game loop we loop over all the enemies, update their position according to their velocity and draw them in the window. And this is what we end up with. Lots of enemies randomly spawning and right now the player doesn't interact with them at all. In the next version I added this little snippet here which makes sure that the enemies don't leave the window and actually it mirrors their velocity so now they are reflected from the edges of the window. And on top of that I do now measure the distance between the player and the enemy and if an enemy gets too close then the game will finish. And that means for the first time we actually have a game at our hands. It might be a very simple game, but we can lose it as you just saw. Since the enemies are officially out to get us now, we need a way to defend ourselves. So I added a projectile with a certain speed and this gets created when we hit the spacebar in the game. It has a position, which is the same as the player position to begin with, and a velocity that depends on the player orientation and the projectile speed. And in the game loop, we then loop over all the projectiles and move them forward. And of course we check if they intersect with any enemy and if they do so we delete this enemy from the enemies list. We can shoot little balls or projectiles and we can kill our enemies although it's still quite hard to actually hit them. At this point I added tiles and we loop over all of them 
and we give them all a color with a random offset to make it look a bit more interesting. But since the gray background is still a little bit boring, I did some more modifications. Namely, I added a height component to every single tile. And the height component actually depends on the distance from the center. So the height should get lower the further away you get from the center. And then I introduced three tiers of heights. And according to these thresholds, the tiles get colored with a different color spectrum. And of course, we still have a bit of a random offset to get this pixelated effect. And we have an island with horrible colors, I might add. And the enemies don't seem to care if they are on land or in the water. And me neither, apparently. To address that, I added some math to make sure the player cannot enter any water tiles. And I also played around with the colors a bit more, as you will be able to see here, which looks much nicer to the eye. This little bit of code in the next version should make sure that the enemies are now also reflected from the land. They can still spawn on the land and they also damage the land now, but they can no longer enter the land, which is what I wanted. This is the line, by the way, that causes the damage. The enemies take away from the height every time they encounter a land tile. By the way, you might be wondering why I am working in my kitchen. The answer is I live in Tokyo with my partner in around 30 square meters. So this is all I have. Okay, okay. In this version, I started to realize that it's getting a bit unwieldy and I started to outsource some of the things into their own little functions, like for example, the spawn enemy functions, which now includes a little check that they only spawn in the water tiles. And another change I made was to the projectiles. It was a bit too easy to shoot the enemies. So I actually added a little bit of a speed decay, a deceleration of the projectiles, which will limit their range. To compensate for that, I changed the simple trigger of the spacebar to a chargeable attack. And we have a charge bar even. Now with the addition of these few lines of code, we have our very basic gameplay loop. Once the enemies have all been destroyed, the enemy number is scaled up and we spawn a new wave of enemies. And since it's quite boring to only look at blue balls as our enemies, I created a polygon which represents our enemies. <laughs> I actually made this very, very naively. I am not very talented when it comes to pixel art or art in general for this matter. So what I ended up doing is I downloaded this little top-down goldfish and then I scaled it down. I added some basic vector points and I hand-coded these coordinates into the polygon in the script. And that should hopefully give us something that resembles a fish. There we have it, our first occurrence of sharks. And if we kill them, we should see a new wave appear. Let's see if I'm skilled enough to beat my own game. Oh, there we go. We have double the amount of sharks spawning in immediately. And as you can imagine, this can get out of hand uh, rather quickly. Motivated by the huge visual update, I actually went ahead and added two more polygons to the enemy shape list here. And if you look carefully, there's only a few points that changed compared to the original shape. And together with a very rudimentary animation controller, this results in a much nicer visual where the speed of the enemy actually dictates how fast the animation runs. And with that, we already arrived at the final build of my Sunday afternoon game dev session. As you can see, there has been a bit more polishing. We have a score up here now, and we also have little animations for the sharks now when they are hit and when they spawn in. Let's see if we can get a new wave of sharks spawning in. And they are a bit offset from each other now to make it a bit more interesting and they slowly scale up as they spawn in and then you can play. So this is a full-on game loop now developed in a single afternoon. I hope this is maybe a little bit inspiring for some of you that you can actually get started with just half a day to spare. 
and make a little little something that you can build upon in the future. For the rest of the week I kept developing a bit further but since I do have a full-time job I only had maybe half an hour to an hour a day of development time which gave me enough time actually to make a few more changes. So with that being said let's have a look at the current build of the game. As you can see, there has been some visual upgrades. We do have a larger window. We do have some random trees now on our islands. And most importantly, we do have a melee weapon now, which we can use to skewer some sharks if they get close to the island, like this one here. We also have a little bit of a scare effect now when the sharks get close to the projectiles, but are not hit. So you really need to hit them hard to actually kill them. Wow, this one is very evasive, but we got it in the end. And of course, we do have limited projectiles now. Right now, I gave myself about 10,000 just for development purposes, but in the end, this will of course be limited to a certain number. All right, now that you're all caught up, I'll have a few errands to run with my partner. I'm going to meet up with her in the city. And after that, we can hopefully get into development of some new features. Okay, I got a bit more work done and one thing I want to point out is that the project got a bit unwieldy as it was so I did go ahead and convert all the different objects into classes. Like instead of having a list of enemies now I have an enemy class that I can instantiate and it had all, has all the properties saved within it, the positions, the orientations, the velocity, the hitboxes and the animation states. Uh, I have something similar going on for the player and also for the projectile itself. So every projectile that is shot is now its own object with its own properties that I can uh, check for and I can check for a hit. And of course, every class also has its own draw function that I can call to do the drawing of the actual object on the screen. And one thing I changed for the whole drawing of objects is instead of drawing it then and there in the code, I added to what I called a render queue. And at the end I call the render queue function, which goes through everything in the render queue and then checks what type of object it is and then renders it onto the screen as needed. And this allows stuff like you might have seen earlier that I can have a Z height, a pseudo Z height of every render item and that makes it possible for the player to walk behind trees or in front of trees depending on the Z height of the object. But you can see it's not perfect because it's not clear which part of the player is going to be behind and which is going to be on top of that. I might have to figure that out at some point down the road. But the last thing I added just now is a new class which is called the boat. And this is something I want to call whenever all the sharks are defeated and we move on to the next level. So until now, every time I killed a shark, I received a new projectile. But instead, what I want is to have a boat, maybe a merchant, I'm not quite sure yet, to deliver the new projectiles at the end of each level. And hopefully down the road, deliver other items that might be useful to the player. So let's see if we can kill our shark here. And when that happens, we saw the boat just spawn down here. It comes to the island, it stops when it reaches the land, and then right now it just disappears and the next level starts. But that's gonna be it for this devlog. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next devlog of my little project that remains unnamed. <laughs>